I uh, have always uh, had trouble mounting large pieces like what we have right here, like what I have right here. This is a 9 by 24 inch uh, mesquite log and uh, they're not incredibly difficult to uh, mount but they are a pain in the butt. Uh, a lot of times uh, what most people do is they either have a cho uh, hoist hanging from their ceiling and it's very possible that one day they're going to uh, collapse their ceiling or they have an engine hoist that they use to bring pieces up. Well this isn't very heavy it's only about uh, maybe 50 pounds maybe 50 pounds, maybe even 70 pounds, about the equivalent to a five gallon can of paint. And uh, it's just, it's awkward getting it into your headstock and getting it into your tailstock. Now, uh, most of the time you'd take and bring it up and get it semi-centered, you'd put something under here, or you'd do the same thing at the headstock, bring it up, and you'd put shims in there until you got it where you want it and then uh, go ahead and uh, screw it in. And then, <laughs> when I was doing that, before I did this other uh, do what I'm about ready to show you, I would do it, and then I had trouble pulling the darn shims out because when I pushed, locked it in, uh, I don't know, down pressure would apply or something and it, w it would lock the shims in place. So I decided that, you know, there's got to be a better way I uh, have a friend that has a trailer repair. He's a welding shop with a machine shop, so I do all my work, my tool inventing and stuff like this at his place. So I went ahead and <laughs> I was gonna do I was gonna be organized here. Anyway, I uh, darn. <laughs> oh here it is. Put it in a good place. Anyway, what I ended up doing was I took a, a trailer jack. This is nothing more than a trailer jack for horse trailers. Most of his business is horses or horse trailers. And so I made this jack uh, set up and that I take and I will put it into my ways. Now, the piece of wood is already sitting on the ways. It's a little difficult getting this jack in here. And this jack will only work on a lathe that has through ways and I call it through ways because you can reach in from the bottom and uh, mess around with your uh, lock and, and nuts and bolts on your head stock tail stock whatever banjo uh, whatever uh, you've got a robust the one way and uh, there's a couple others that have the the ways sitting on a big tube you can't do this with that uh, you can't use this jack so this jack is only good for ways that have that. But here's what I have done. I have designed it in such a manner that it will drop in through the ways and then I twist it and it locks it into place. Then I can start lifting. Now also, I mentioned that when you uh, use the wedges and you bring the tailstock tail stock up, you tighten it, then you can't get the wedges out. The same thing would apply to the jack once you got the piece of wood locked in. You could take and lower the jack and get it out of the way, but then you got a piece of metal down below that's, if you got a bouncy piece of wood, it would be causing this thing to rattle and make all kinds of noises. I have designed it in such a way that it goes up through the ways and then you turn it and it locks into place. When the piece of wood is mounted, I will unscrew the jack, turn it, and then bring it down. So what I'm gonna do here, and uh, one thing I didn't do was find my center. Since I know it's 24 inches long, I could guess that 12 inches is right here, and then it would be balanced. But I have a, a knot that it's just sitting on, and it's messed up my uh, <coughs> ways that where I cannot bring it up through. But I'm going to go ahead and mount it up underneath. I don't have to, and I'll show you. I'll do it right now. I could, for simplicity, just take, drop it in, and it's locked in place. And it's approximately 12 inches center. If it's not centered, that's no big deal because all you got to do is just put one hand on your piece of wood and balance your piece of wood. You can either lift it or 
push down on it to bring it into your center. I've already got my wood marked on each end where center is, but uh, okay, so I've got my piece of wood already mounted and I want to take the jack out of here. All I do is this, and the jack is out. So that way it's out of the way. Simple, it's just a trailer jack. That's all it is. So here goes. And I do have another piece that I'll show in a few minutes. I'm going to get this brought up to center. And the piece of wood is not centered on there. Well, I guess it's centered enough to be balanced. I'm still trying to work out a way that I can make my jack uh, rigid in here. I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. Because once I start adding stuff to it, then I have to uh, have more tools here and it takes it a little bit longer and all that kind of stuff. What I'm looking at right now is I'm approximately one inch off of center here and same thing over here. Let me uh, bring the camera over. You can see the jack, what it's doing, and I'm not even, uh, even with this jack, I thought I was. Okay, that wants to roll off. Uh, okay, so right here, it's crap, casting a shadow right on it. <coughs> There's my center line here, and I have the same thing. Over here at the chuck plate, there you can see a line down in there. But I'm going to bring it back over this way. Uh, I can't seem to get this camera thing figured out yet. Okay, so I'm going to do this one-handed. I hope I don't rock the jack and cause it to uh, lose my piece of wood. That looks about centered. And this one is just a little bit higher than center over here. So what I'm going to do over there is I'm just going to push down on it. But before we go anywhere with this, uh, you'll see this angle that's on this piece of wood. It's not ideal. It does not give me a good 100% mount. Over here on the chuck plate, I'm closer to 90 degrees than what I am. What I haven't done also is I made this live center. I made 17 of them. I have a patent on that live center. I made a nose ring to fit on this live center. That is nothing more than another chuck plate, basically, except it goes onto the live center. When I made that live center, I did not think about threading that nose ring or nose, so I made a slip fit for my nose ring. And what that will allow me to do is when this piece is ready to be mounted, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this in stuck in here. I gotta turn on a light because can't see behind the chuck, uh, the shadow of the wood. I can't see it. Okay, and this, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to bring my tailstock up. I, of course, I'm going to be in the way of everything. I'm going to do this. Let's just go. You can't see. The nose ring is what's important. The chuck plate is uh, just about where it should be. Ouch. Okay. And it looks to me Like I'm darn close to center. I missed it here by a quarter inch. 
But you can imagine doing this without something as easy as this jack that I've got. Now, if nothing moves, I think I am centered. And over here, since my center point of my life center doesn't really come through, it would work. Okay, now I've got this jack is wedged in there. So all I do, half a turn. Oops, I'm going to take more than that because I've got tough. I'm hitting it wood. <clears throat> and now I'm done. It's out. This jack is designed for a 20 inch lathe. They can be made larger. Okay, and just to show you what I've got going here, I'll go to the uh, nose ring. And let's see, yeah, there's that angle. You can see that it's pretty drastic. It happens all the time. I have never met a chainsaw that will cut 90 degrees to a log. <laughs> so the pieces of wood that you get or the pieces of wood that you cut always have that angle on there for some darn reason. And uh, when I can figure out how to get cure that, I will. But what I do is, if I have to, I'll take and get onto my screws that I have on the chuck or nose ring. And I use a small ratchet, Sears ratchet. Screw that in, embeds itself in about an eighth of an inch, maybe, uh, maybe a sixteenth, whatever. As long as my tailstock does not creep, this uh, nose ring will hold this piece in place. I've never lost one yet. So I'm, I'm embedded in there. I am good. This is going to be uh, a worthwhile piece. Now, we'll go over here to the chuck plate. And you can see what that's doing. I have a screw right here that's not touching a thing. This one is just barely. This one's in about a sixteenth of an inch. Now, what I've been doing lately is I've been going to what I call the jaw splits. This is a jaw split, in my opinion. I, I don't have another name for it other than jaw separation line or whatever. I screw that in a little bit tighter. This one right here it's looser than a goose. You can see it moving around. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, but the thing is, I still have more screws uh, holding this in than I would with, uh, if I was using a spur. Uh, I do not own a face plate. Since I invented this chuck plate, and I'm going to say that I am the inventor, because nobody else has come up to say it. I've seen two of them. Uh, one is Amy Greer, I believe it's Amy Greer, and she's, she calls hers a spike plate, and she doesn't have these adjusting screws like I have, and uh, hers is good for flat, uh, flat sawn wood. And then Vermeck, I believe, out of uh, New Zealand or Australia, has something similar to the chuck plate. Uh, somehow it's really hard to locate online. And uh, I've seen a picture of it, and I almost ordered one just to see what it was, see how much different it was. And also, I wanted to find out when they made it, because uh, I made my first chuck plate in 2010. And I had, uh, I, it, it came right out of my head. Now, maybe if somebody made one prior to that, maybe I'd seen it and just never really considered it. And until I needed something, then I decided to... Uh, dream uh, dreaming up on my own okay I'm in <clears throat> move this cord I don't like it where it is I'm not going to turn this I'm going to turn it on but I'm not going to turn the piece of wood because there's no need 
Okay. I gotta move the camera. I'm the only one only one here. I can't get anybody to assist. Okay. Power is off. And you can see the advantage of that nose ring right away. That piece of wood is in there. It's pretty darn good. And you get a live center and it's just the center point. You put it in there. If it's going to toss it, it will make a number nine, I think. When it comes off that piece of wood, it just, the wood comes off and does that number right there. It leaves a nine in the bottom of your face plot or in the bottom of your wood. And uh, ask me how I know that. I, I got three or four of them. <laughs> And then, uh, oh. and there's the chuck plate, and that one's not too bad. Uh, it's actually closer to 90 degrees than I ever have had. What I will do is uh, maybe I'll work a tenon on that piece over here. So what I'll do is go ahead and get dressed up for it. And I'm just going to work this end right here. I'm not going to mess with the headstock end of this. Boy, all of a sudden I see my camera being a problem. So I'm casting shadows of what I'm trying to film. Okay. And one of the advantages of the jack going in the way it does coming out, being able to come out, is it's not stuck in there. It's not in the way of any of your other tools that you have a necessity for. So. Okay. Now I'm going to make a somewhere near 5-inch uh, tenon for this. Normally I don't mess with the tenon until after I've got this thing shaped up some. Okay. I'll use my easy wood. Okay, I've got a tenon done, and I'm just going to loosen it. Uh, if I wanted to, I could take and put the jack back under it and lower it down. I don't have to because a piece of wood is not that heavy. It's a pain in the butt to get centered is what it is. So that's how easy that thing was to center. And come on. Now I can get it out of there. So oh, I said I would show you the marks where the screws went in. All those dots that you see, uh, we're going to have to, I don't know which one I ended up with. Probably the one that the holes look like they uh, start a pattern. This one right here, these right here were all put in, screwed in by hand. And I'm going to guess this bottom one right here. These two right here might have been when I first put the piece of wood up there and started screwing in and I was trying to find my center. There's my center right there probably. So these, 
and you can see there's no movement. If if I would have slid, get a, get, get a catch, got a catch, this would have had a tear, you know, forming a little half circle. And it didn't do, or not circle, but a, a line like that, all of them would have done that. It didn't do it. I didn't get a catch. <clears throat> Probably <laughs> going too slow. <laughs> and then here is the nose ring. Here's what it did. Boy. This must have wax on it. I, I don't remember ever doing that, but I've got a ring, a uh, no, uh, screw there, or not a screw, but a point. Yeah, a screw there, here and here. And none of those screws uh, go in. They just just touch and uh, puncture, and that's it. And that's all you really need. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. I never handle wood this big, and every time I do, I get damages. I just smack my finger. Okay, I've got a, a piece of wood right here. I don't know what it is. Almost looks like it could be walnut. But again, it's big, it's bulky, it's awkward. So, I haven't tried to set it up yet for mounting. I need to get another thing, a pencil, a pencil box. Pencil pen. Okay. Eleven and a quarter, so it's going to be five and five eighths. Here, with eleven inches even, so five and a half. You can all also see that this piece of wood is not ninety degrees, like everything. And I cut this on both ends, so no one to. All right, except for me. Ten and a quarter. Uh, it's four, uh, five and one eighth, and ten and a half, so five and a quarter. So now I'm centered. This one I'm probably going to just mount. I'm going to take my headstock, blow everything off bring it up this way. What I'm doing is I'm rocking my headstock so I can blow any dust out that might accumulate when I try to start this thing. Oh, so, now I can slide. And I better see what I've got because I haven't measured that piece of wood for length. Probably about 18, 16 and a half. Okay, the same thing here. Uh, <coughs> I've got my center. I'll take this thing, and I usually take my banjo and slide it up as close to the headstock as I can, get it out of the way. And again, I need that jack. What do I do with it? Yeah. Oh, put it back where I keep it. Fancy that. <laughs> okay, so 16 and something. So what that does is that 16 inches puts me into, I don't know what you'd call it, a gusset, that's it. Here, puts me, I'm gonna put it on this side of the gusset, headstock side of the gusset. And I think that's only about seven inches or so.
it locks in it can't go any further that had to be designed in so I could when I turned it it wouldn't twist and drop so if it turns out that it's uh, looks like it needs to be over here on this side I'll go ahead and move it and now it'll be more balanced Find a spot where this thing rests in here pretty good. Okay, this needs to be moved back. Oh, come on. All that moving I was doing, I twisted this thing and it was already ready to fall out but you can see you can't see okay One day I'll get them figured out. Oh, come on, I'm moving it. I do need to figure out how to lock it so it doesn't move. I can guess over here about where center is. Center looks really good there and here what I can do is this and I have done that before I'm going to bring up the tail stop some more I'll bring it up about three inches and these screws what I should have done is moved them back or tweak the chuck plate a bit to where It'll work. Okay. Need that light again. Unplugged. God damn it. I've got to do something here because my wood dropped. This is where I need to be there, back here. It doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, that is ready there. I think I'm ready. It's in. Okay. Take the, well, okay. See it? There we go. I loosened it. So now, in this case, I can take it. Nope. I'm going to have to. Drop it some. 
Okay. <coughs> Back where it belongs. That didn't work out. Something went uh, wrong. My light. My lighting is just really bad. Or my eyes have gone bad. Used to be I could see what I'm doing. Okay. Now it's it's there within a sixteenth. So it's just the way that this is out of shape. So I'm going to go ahead and run with what I have. Basically, I wanted to show what the jack can do. This screw right here on the uh, nose ring is not touching wood. This one is, but never hurt to get another one in there. All of them are in. Here I'm missing my number one screw on my chuck plate. That's not making contact. Number two is at a jaw split. It is not making contact. It will. Now there's a total of 13 screws on the chuck plate. And you don't need 13. You really only need about four as long as they're on the three and a half inch ring of screws, which is the outer ring of screws. But right now, I think I'll have about three, four, maybe about three more extra screws making contact. So I've got upwards of nine screws here helping me out total. Okay, that's done. Again, make a tenon, and you can see how bad that looks. That one would definitely take flight, a very good chance of taking flight while trying to work it. And then here's the chuck plate doing its job. Usually I'm more organized than this. I have better situation with my son and the break in my life. They bought me this piece of junk. So. There's the chuck plate doing what it does. Okay, I think this is a piece of walnut. I'm not sure. Nobody can tell me what it is because I got it out of an alley. Probably have to do that with a hand planer. Electric. You can't plug them in, they ain't worth using. Okay. That's all I'm going to do today. I was uh, basically demonstrating my jack, mounting heavier pieces that's uh, a little bit too large to be doing a single individual. It's not impossible and it's uh, not that hard if you use your head a little bit but it's kind of awkward. So here we go. Here let me pull this thing out of here. Uh, see it wants to collapse out of there. 
there it is. You can tell, no face plate, uh, no real work went in, into mounting this. And I might as well show the holes again. There they are. There's one hole right there, hole here, here, and here. I almost got one going there. Well, you can see I missed my center. My center should be right here, but uh, you can't really see that in the camera. The, yeah, now you probably can see the mark. There's center there. Let's see what I did here. <laughs> I was within uh, eighth inch of center, like I indicated at the beginning. There's my center here. I don't know what happened to my pencil. I was going to mark my rings, but you can see I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and probably right here, ten holes, ten screws that actually made contact with this. So this is done. I will put a tenon on it. I mean, I've got my tenon on it, and I just need to dress them up. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're just pieces of wood. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>